There is no charge for this electricity. In this video, I'll show you how I made a 40 watt electrical generator from these common household items. In this project, I'm using a USB cable that charges this phone from a USB port. I don't really need the USB head, so I'll go ahead and cut that off, then use my wire strippers to remove this outer layer, pull off the shielding, and reveal the four wires inside. I've done this to both pieces of the cable and stripped the plastic from the ends of the wires. I don't want to blow up this phone, so I'll need to test the voltage first by plugging the USB head into the port and attaching these alligator clips to the red and black wires. Using a multimeter, I want to confirm these wires supply 5 volts of electricity, and they do. I can measure the current draw by connecting the cable, the phone, and the multimeter in series. The circuit is completed when these wires touch and the phone lights up to prove it. This little black plug symbol shows that it's charging and it only appears when the phone gets around 5 volts. It looks like the current flowing into the battery is about 72 microamps, so my generator will have to produce at least that. Okay, I'm ready to make a phone charger. I have a cordless drill I think I can convert into an electrical generator by running it backwards. I'll remove the bit, take the battery out, and looking up into the handle you can see the two terminals where the battery would connect. For testing, I'll attach alligator clips to both of them and then connect the leads to my multimeter. When I pull the trigger and twist the rotating end of the drill, I'm generating around 5 volts, and that's what I need. To make this into a usable cell phone charger, I rounded up a piece of scrap 2x4, a wooden fork, a ball of yarn, a mixing beater, a roll of tape, and some aluminum foil. The first thing I need to do is secure the trigger in the on position, so I'll use plenty of yarn to do that. Then I'll fasten the drill to the 2x4 with as many wraps as it takes to hold it tight. The mixing beater gets inserted into the drill chuck, and when it's fastened tight, I'm going to make sure there's no slack when it rotates. I'll need the torque setting to be at its highest, and confirm the drill is set to reverse. Now it's time to rig the electrical system. I'll rip this sheet of aluminum foil in two strips, then fold them into makeshift wires. These ends are being rolled to a point, and these other ends folded over to make them a little thicker. Those flat ends will be held in place under the terminal clips on the drill, and since I made these so long, I'll use the excess to make sure they're well separated because I don't want them to touch. A little tape will hold those temporarily until I can add some yarn to fasten them in place. My red and black wires are stripped down about an inch, and I don't need these wires at all, so one cut and they're gone. Now the red and black wires are attached to the aluminum leads, respecting the polarity of the drill. In this case, red is my positive, and the black is my negative. The wires are secured with some more yarn, and all I need now is some leverage for my crank handle. My wife's salad fork will work, but I don't want to scratch it up, so I'll add a few protective layers of tape to the contact points, and now I'm thinking this is ready for a test. With my handle in place, I'll start cranking, and look at that. The phone lit right up. It's showing the little plug symbol, so I know this is charging, and if I stop, the symbol goes away. It looks like it's working great, so I'm going to take this inside and clamp it down to a table for better leverage. The crank handle gets inserted, and the system is powered up. The charging symbol is flashing, which means I need to crank just a little bit faster for stable power. And there it is. I'm cranking this at about 100 RPM to develop the 5 volts this phone needs to charge. If I crank slower, the phone won't power up, and if I crank too fast, I risk damaging it. Just for the challenge, I'm going to see how long it takes to recharge this battery from its completely discharged condition. It seems to be taking quite a while. But when I think about it, it takes quite a while even when it's plugged in with a charger. I'm coming up on 3 hours, and I just saw the charging symbol flash off. That means this battery isn't accepting any more charge. It's done. I can disconnect the charger cable, and this phone is fully ready to go. If this electrical generator will charge a phone, I'm wondering if it will recharge a battery. I've added metal magnets to the ends of a rechargeable AA battery, so that my alligator clips will attach easily. By attaching the same wire to both ends, I'm draining the charge as quickly as possible, and I can feel the battery getting hot. This battery is completely dead now, so to revive it, I'm adding these lead wires in parallel with the system and connecting them to their respective terminals. It takes about 15 minutes of cranking, and it's harder to turn the handle this time because I'm pushing a larger electrical current into the battery. Alright, it's done, and a quick test on the meter shows that the battery is fully charged. Well, that was educational. I also tried hooking up an incandescent flashlight bulb and got it to fully illuminate. A white LED was also tested, and it was so bright it actually hurt my eyes to watch. Well, there's a makeshift electrical generator that you can make in a pinch that will charge batteries, illuminate lights, and generate around 40 watts on human power. Now it's your turn. What situation can you think of where a charger like this would come in handy? Leave your thoughts in the comments below and subscribe to be notified when I post new videos. Also make sure to hit the thumbs up on this video and share with your friends. I appreciate your support. Thanks for watching.